Well, in terms of nuclear containment, no, but in general, in civil engineering, it's used for temporary works. And that's the key here, temporary works. Once you've done your ice wall, put in, say, for example, your foundations for a bridge or whatever, then you take the ice wall away. The uniqueness here is that the Japanese are using this in a longer term. They're saying to this generation, look, let's put in an ice wall to divert the water flow around these reactor cores. Those melted down reactor cores will remain active for hundreds, if not thousands of years. So there's a commitment to keep either the ice wall technology in place or to replace it with an alternate technology by some future generation. One of the problems here is that the, what is happening is water is coming off the escarpment above the free reactors. It's then percolating through the ground. There's hydrostatic pressures pushing the water up towards the sea level. It's then collecting the fission products and the radioactive products from the melted down cores and taking it out to sea. What they're trying to do is divert that water to stop it going past the cores. With the local geology, that's a very big challenge. And I don't think this is the right way of doing it because it requires continuous feeds, continuous power to keep the ice wall going. And also, of course, it's got that responsibility for future generations. Well, I think they should now have a plan to actually tackle the root cause. And the root cause here is how do you remove, how do you control, manage, and eventually remove the reactor cores? This is an expedient solution being put up, a temporary solution that requires a longer term initiative. What they should do, in my opinion, is put all their technology and thinking into how to actually control, manage and remove the reactor cores as soon as possible. If the reactor cores remain there, it's going to be a constant leachate of radioactivity.